take the election. It was Reagan's second term. We went in to that Hyatt Hotel and we had us a meeting. And I had only known Phil a little while, but he came. And he played that trumpet. You remember that, Phil? You remember marching over that Hyatt Hotel lobby and playing that trumpet? We had a big parade. Do you remember that? Well, well, Monty, where are you, Monty? Did you escape? <laughs> Monty, tell me that story you told me today. He was there. I took him with me up to that meeting. He was just a little kid. Monty, you still have to obey me. I don't care where you've been, what you've done. It's been about 24 or 5 years, something like 1984. that. 1984. Yeah, 84, 20, yeah, never mind. <laughs> My hair is white now. I, our hair changed, I don't know. But uh, no, uh, was it Amstead's was playing uh, yeah. piano? And I was playing fiddle there. I don't know if you remember a kid playing fiddle there. But you got up on piano with this guy, and both you guys were swelling on that piano, and I was playing fiddle, and all the people start dancing in the spirit out there. I can't remember how many people was there, but everybody was dancing. Oh, there were about 3,000. And they danced for the longest time. I didn't know how they could do it that long, but they did. <laughs> it was just really neat. Yeah, but tell about your, how green you were and what you oh, knew and didn't know. Yeah, well, that's the first time I really played electrically. I, I, I'm from Oolagaw, Oklahoma, so... That's Will Rogers' hometown, and uh, I had to get on a subway and go to Maryland. Now, that's quite an adventure for me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so anyhow, I had to go get a preamp, and then your sound man started putting all these cool sounds to me, and it opened all kinds of things up in my brain, you know. <laughs> but anyway, it was really fun. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now... We had a move of the Spirit in here today. And uh, in that move of the Spirit, we had a very quiet time. And a gentleman gave a, a message in tongues. And I knew that it was an anointed message in tongues, but I felt we needed a little more silent time, and then it could come. And so I asked him to hold it for a little. He didn't hear me at the beginning, and he went right on and gave it. And Brother Bill Potter has the interpretation, and I'm going to ask him to come up here, Brother Bill, and read that interpretation because he got it at the time. And um, Brother Bill is a chaplain at actually you and the leadership of this uh, prison ministry that's worldwide. And uh, what's the name of that ministry? Good News Jail and Good News Jail and Prison Ministry. Good News Jail and Prisoners Ministry all over the world, and Brother Bill. Uh, lives in Colorado, and so he got uh, the interpretation, and it's a blessing. And I was just in awe because I've never had this happen to me before. But really? Yes, first time ever. Ah. So I was just, no, that's, uh, hallelujah, you know, is right. But no, God, that, that really isn't you, is it? He said, yes, it is, my son. But he says, my children, I hear your prayers. Ah. I have not forsaken you. The angels have been sent to your homes, to where you work, to the senators, to the White House, to all the congressmen all over the land. And you are my people. Put on all of my armor and stand and pray, for it is my battle. <coughs> pray, pray, I am coming soon. Now, if you want to know <coughs> how to move in the gifts of the Spirit in a church, I suggest you get this book off of a book table, A Tribute to Spiritual Excellence by the Life and Ministry of Reverend Mrs. J.R. Goodwin. We call him Papa and Mama Goodwin. Brother Hagen said the manifestation of all the gifts of the Spirit operated best in this church than any other in good order. And uh, this book is written by two men who were longtime members of that church. One of them is Joe Jordan, 
and one of them is Ron Smith. And Ron Smith was the educational de director there, and Ron Smith is with us tonight, right there. Bless the Lord. So uh, this afternoon, Brother Phil, you know, we had a meeting where we started playing and just went, and then we had all this Holy Ghost drunkenness. Well, we're going to start and just worship God tonight and just go as far as we can go. But I was sitting over there, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, let the prophet speak. Now, I think uh, he's a prophet too, Phil. So um, tonight, uh, I've asked some that I know and recognize as prophets are here uh, with us on the front row. And so Brother Phil's going to start us. We're going to go as high as he wants and feels and led to do. And then uh, we're going to, um, I believe what will happen after that is that uh, music and that place that we get to is going to be a high one and that the Lord will have something. Brother Wiseman as well, we invite you. And, um, and so we'll, we'll worship the Lord. Uh, the first time I ever met Phil, I tell this story all the time. <clears throat> um, I shall never stop telling it, Phil, so just get over it. Uh. But um, I, I was, uh, had been at camp meeting, Brother Higgins' camp meeting. It was a Saturday. I'd been to every meeting. I had a, I was, an appointment to do um, a camp meeting in um, Minnesota, Minneapolis that night. So I got up and caught an early flight. I was so sleepy. And I laid down about 11. I got to Minneapolis hotel room, and I said, Lord, I'm going to sleep till 3, and then I'll wake up and get ready for the night meeting. And um, so... At 3 o'clock, I woke up, and I had been having a vision. It was a night vision. And when you have a night vision and you wake up, you still can see what you saw in the dream, and you hear him interpret it to you. So what I saw in the dream was this. I was in a great house, and the great house was going to have a great wedding. And I knew that wedding was the wedding supper of the Lamb, and they were all scurrying about getting ready for it. I was sitting in an armchair... Uh, and I um, was watching everybody get wedding, ready for the wedding. Oh, I was having such a wonderful time. And I, was, I could see the, uh, the I, I didn't really see, no. I, I sensed the presence of the bride and the groom. And I knew it was the wedding supper of the Lamb. And uh, so I'm sitting there and I, I just daydreaming of the wedding. My knee was up over the arm of the armchair. And uh, a door opens over here, and somebody comes out the door and said, <clears throat> please help us come get ready for the wedding. I said, no, no, I can't help you. Everybody has their part. I thought they were cooking the food. I said, that is your part, and my part is to daydream of this wedding. <laughs> After all, I'm a witness. I'm a watcher. So anyway, uh, they came the second time, Please, please come help us get ready for the wedding. No. And then they said, then I said, I have to, I have to watch this preparation. And so um, I said, everybody has their parts. Now you do your part and I'll do my part. We each do our parts. I preached them a sermon. So then uh, the third time they came, they were crying. Please help us come get ready for the wedding. I was translated back there. They were not cooking, as I suppose. They were unwrapping gifts. And the gifts were big, tall boxes, uh, like a, a man could fit in this box. And they were beautifully wrapped, and they would take hold of the bow, and they would go swish, and the bow and the wrapper would go down, and they would take out the contents, and they were unwrapping the gifts, which I gave them a little lesson on. You're not supposed to unwrap the gifts. That is the bride's job. But... <laughs> I thought, since I'm back here anyway, I'll see what they are getting. And, and it fell off, and, and it was a garment. Every, everything was a piece of clothing, single piece. And they would take that garment out, and they would hang it on a rack. And all the colors were green, yellow, brown, orange. 
like, you know, subdued orange, burnt orange. And uh, there were earth tones. And the Lord said to me, they're unwrapping the gifts. He said, now the gifts are the gifts of the Holy Spirit to the bride. They are the nine, what you call the nine gifts of the Spirit. And they are the ministry gifts, apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher. He said, you have never seen them operate the way they're designed to operate. And then there were boxes over on the side, and they were wrapped in gold and paper and gossamer bows. And he said, those contain gl gl golden, glorious garments that the bride will wear in the last days of her earth walk. These garments have been for the earth walk. She will wear those glorious garments at the last before she leaves here. And he said, uh, you have never seen any of these gifts operate, but you will see them the way they were designed to do. Uh, designed, you know, clothing is designed. And um, so uh, he said, these people are, are the prayers, and they're praying for the gifts to be unwrapped. He said, the gifts are in people. And he said, they have to be unwrapped. And he said, the prayers unwrap the gifts. And he said, your job is to help the prayers. So there's one of the first places I found out about this helping prayers. I don't know how I help prayers, but evidently there's an anointing to do it. And uh, so one thing is an evidence of it is, is this, you're here. Uh, bless the Lord. I think it's a place, whatever. But anyway... Uh, that I went on down to the meeting, and when I got down to the meeting, it was a small little camp meeting. I don't even remember who was the pastor. And a trumpet player was playing, and it was um, Phil Driscoll. But I didn't know it was Phil Driscoll. Uh, he had just come from the world. And oh my, when I heard him, the Holy Ghost said, there's one of those gifts. And then there came a word of the Lord to Phil, which I'm sure he doesn't even remember. And the word of the Lord was, uh, the music that you make, other men do not make, because the music that you make comes from heaven. And it is for the glorious adorning of the bride. It is made up of color and light and as well as sound. And uh, so later on, years later, I was telling that story in Cleveland, Tennessee. His mother, who became a very good friend of mine, she was a prayer. And uh, uh, she looked like Phil with hair, you know, more hair. And she was, on her it looked really good. But <laughs> Oh, Ruth, I'm telling you. John Payne, uh, John Payton, you had a mother, he had a mother. And that's what got him out of the dregs, the praying mother, and that's what got you out of the Black Panther. And it got him out of all that God-given talent going to the world. So um, she, she told Shelly and me, I want to take you out, and I don't want anyone to hear what I say. So she got, us, got a little private room at a restaurant, and she told us the story that when she and Phil's father were first married, they didn't have a lot of money, but they used all their money to buy a church. They were ministers. And they bought, I think it was an old Methodist church. They were four square. And she was pregnant with Phil. They lived downstairs. And upstairs in the church, there were painted glass windows. And uh, the Lord told her, go upstairs. And she went upstairs and she heard music. And the music was coming through those painted glass windows and it was color and it was light. And it was the same music that Phil makes, but it wasn't a trumpet. And the Lord told her, this is for the baby Go sit in front of that. So she went over there and sat, and all that light and music came into her, came into Phil. The devil made a play for it, but he didn't get it. And Phil, I love you. Come on and just take your liberty, and we'll just go. And don't be concerned about the time.
on my ministry of helps. We lift up our voice to you, Lord. We lift up our voices. We say there's none like you. Let your presence fill this place. Let us decrease, but let you increase. Hallelujah. You know, Billy, I don't even know, I don't even know if I know this song, but you all are, you're very gifted. And there's no reason that the world controls any style. Just give me an F, brother. Someone that knows this keyboard, would you come up here? Because I don't know it. That might work. No, that won't work. You know, every sound, the world doesn't even know why we have all these sounds. They think it's for rock and roll or something, but it's not. It's for the body of Christ. If anyone knows this, you may come up and help me. When we get to heaven, it's going to be all easily discernible. <laughs> I, got, I think I figured it out. It's going to be meeting in the air in sweet, sweet by. And we're back. Going to be a meeting in the air. Sweet, sweet by and by. Going to be a meeting in the air. The glorious.
glorious. Everybody say glorious. I do declare God's own son. He's gonna be the leading one at the meeting. up a little bit, guys. I can't really hear it, and I don't want to put on my phones. magnify your name so I lift up my voice to say there is none like you Lord I lift my voice to say the mighty power in your name is none like you can flame the stars of space by your amazing grace I can be new there is none like you no one to compare not like you, my Lord, there is not like you, Lord, I magnify spontaneously while the people meditated what had been spoken or sung. You play, brother, there is none like him.
such a power fall sing of the mercy of the Lord forever I will sing I will sing I will sing of the mercy of the Lord forever I will sing my mouth just begin to think about how God has been faithful to us. You are faithful. You, my Lord, are faithful. You are faithful to me. And I will sing your praise. You I will never 
Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for in his wonderful face and the things of.
Come on, let's lift up our voices. Can we together? Gorande la bash la tahaya. Girande la bando shakandahaya. Lord, we magnify your name. Lord, we lift our voices. And we come higher, Lord. We come higher, Lord. We come higher, Lord. Take us higher, Lord. Let us set aside all the cares of this world. Let us set aside all of the fears. Let us see Jesus in all of your glory. Let us see Jesus in all of your glory. Lord, we want to see you. We by faith right now, we see you. And you are high and lifted up. And your train fills this temple. You are high and lifted up. And your train fills this temple. You are high and lifted up. And you take us higher and higher and higher. Lord, lift me up. Go to piano. Stand, oh, yes, by faith on heaven's table land. You know what it's talking about, don't you? Uh, say it's a higher plane than I'm going for. That I have found Lord plant my feet on higher Lord plant my feet on higher Lord plant my feet Now, 
sing with me. For we are standing in His presence. We are standing in Your presence. In Your presence. We are standing in Your presence. On a whole. Lord, we are standing on your presence. We are standing in your presence. We are standing in your presence. For these are the days when my power is exploding in the earth. Don't be distracted by bad news because my power is on the increase. I have released a manifestation of my presence in the world that is working right now to turn things around for my people. My word has never returned void. And I have said many times, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. These are not the times to cry the blues. These are the times of great victory. These are the times when the believers will begin to lift up their voices and heaven will bear record and witness to the great festivals on the earth by my people. For this is the time to encourage yourself. This is the time to Stir up the gifts that are on the inside of you. This is the time to not step back. This is the time to press forward. This is not the time to rest on your past accomplishments. This is not the time to slow down. There's never been a slowdown in heaven, nor will there ever be. Be it known this day heaven is on the increase. My people are 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 on the increase. On the increase. You are on the increase. These are days of increase, days of victory, days of heaven on earth, days of my glory, days of my manifested power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we magnify and we exalt your name. We bless your name, Lord. We stir up ourselves to bless and to honor you. To bless you. Now notice how the scene changes. Now you begin to play. Just begin to play by the Spirit. Play chords, don't just play. Yes, yes. There is, an, a, there is a different anointing in every instrument that I have created. Oh, there's great differences of anointings on instruments. Satan knows that and has used it against my people and against the ones that I've called. But these are the days when the blinders are coming off. These are the days that my people are beginning to be astute in sounds. The word says that David danced before the Lord with all of his might. He played and he would sing. And when he would sing, my power would come down wherever he sang. It's no different today. Whenever you sing, expect the power of Almighty God to fill the atmosphere wherever you are. Don't be robbed from the songs of the Lord. Don't be robbed from making up your own songs because I put songs in you that are just waiting to come out because the songs in you will prophesy your victories. They'll prophesy your future. They'll prophesy your great expectations. Your dreams will come out in your songs. Your hope will come out in your songs. It'll begin to be quickened on the inside of you. 
Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. That my Lord is good. Oh, taste and see. Oh, the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Ha 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 ha. Oh, the Lord is good. Ha, 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 yeah. Oh, the Lord is good. Ha, 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 yeah. Oh, that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see. Come on, sing it with me. That the Lord is good. I don't believe you. Taste and see. That the Lord is good. When the devil starts putting some on it, you sing that to him. Oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. <laughs> oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. Now, you know what the Lord just spoke to me? He said, you know how the blues were formed in the earth? Satan wants you to reflect on how bad it is. If your songs reflect on how bad it is, you'll go down to where bad is. But if you begin to sing songs that are filled with the goodness of the Lord, filled with his promises and provision and things that make you encourage yourself in him, then you begin to be encouraged and you'll find that it's not such a sad affair at all because you can live in a higher place than the sad. You can live in a higher place than the bad. You can live in a higher plane than the lack zone. You can live above. That's why the word says we are above and not beneath. Say, I'm above, I'm above, and I am not beneath. Not beneath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am above. My thoughts are above, not under. My thoughts are filled with God's goodness. It's not just reading about it or meditating about it. It's disciplining your mind not to go certain places. You've got to put a lock on certain doors. You've got to lock the door of lack. I'm not going to think, nor am I going to consider lack. I'm not going to consider 
sad. I'm not going to consider bad. I'm not going to consider anxiety. I'm not going to have an anxiety attack. I am filled with the goodness of Almighty God. And I sound like I'm filled with the goodness. I sound like I'm filled with heaven. Heaven is on the inside of me. And when I let it out, heaven begins to encompass everything around me. That's the way it is. That's the way believers are supposed to be. We are heaven beings on the earth. We are heavenly minded. We are heavenly sounded. We are heavenly voiced. We voice heavenly songs. We sing songs that propel us up. Music is a stairway to either heaven or hell. And as we begin to climb in the sounds, see, there's a whole thing in the, in the, in the frequency of heaven. There are songs continually that are songs that are in heaven that are coming to the earth for all those that will sing them, all of those that will be a part of them. So don't get hung up in singing just the songs you know. It's good to sing the songs you know, but don't just stay there. Begin to sing melodies in your heart unto the Lord because God of heaven knows exactly what is needed in all of our lives at every instant in time. And as we begin to sing the spontaneous songs of the Lord, Heaven comes down. Lord, fill me with your glory. Lord, fill me with your love. Hmm. Lord, fill me with your power. Let me sing your songs. Lord, fill me with your glory. <laughs> Lord, fill me with your songs. <laughs> Lord, I want to sing with angel voices. Lord, fill me with your song. The word says, if your eye be single, your whole body is full of light. When you begin and I begin, you know that verse that says, God inhabits the praises of Israel. When the Amplified says, inhabits the holy place where the praises of Israel are offered. Whenever you sing songs that are songs of redemption, songs of the glory, songs of healing, songs of deliverance, songs of victory, songs of the word, you establish a holy ground wherever you are Satan cannot penetrate that. He cannot go through the force field that the sound creates because God in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory, but God on the inside of you comes out when you play the guitar, when you play the, the, the violin, when I play the trumpet, when you play anything, when you sing, the sound that comes out of you is not just the sound of a man, it's the sound of God in the man. And that has dominion. That sound has dominion. That sound rocks hell. That sound stirs away darkness. It causes dead things to come alive. It takes crusty people, hearts of stone. It'll break them through. That sound has God in it. That sound causes heaven to come down and nobody stays the same. And it's not business as usual. It's not church 
as in some kind of a traditional move. When God comes, people's lives are changed forever. Oh, God, just show up and do things in all of us. Do what only you can do, Lord. Now, Billy, I only have, come up here. There has to be a revival in worship and in the songs of the redeemed. We have had teaching until we become fact. We've gotten revelation upon revelation, but some have gotten so legalistic in the revelation that the spirit is so many times quenched. God never intended revelation to make you stiff. He intended revelation to cause you to be liberated. Yes. And when revelation comes, you sound, you are built to sound like what you know. You're built to sound like what you believe. Listen to the songs the world sings. Yes. They're filled with hopelessness because the world believes there's no hope. They're filled with trouble because the world only sees the trouble. But we that are alive in Jesus, we see by new eyes. We see by the eyes of faith. And we know we've learned things. Now it's time to quit just putting them on the shelf. It's time to begin to use what you've learned. It's time to begin to sound like what you've learned. It's time to begin. We cannot talk about being joyful if we don't sound joyful. (laughs) We cannot talk about being free if we don't sound free. We can't talk about being raised from the dead if we don't have a dance in our step. We cannot talk about being high when we look like we've lost. We have not lost. No. Will the body of Christ begin to sound like the body of Christ? We are not silent. We are alive. We are filled with victory. We are filled with joy. We are filled with expectation. Oh, man, get your eyes off of what happened yesterday and get your eyes on where God's taking you today, where he's taking you tomorrow. Don't look down. Look up because your redemption is drawing now. It's now. It's now. It's now. Like the word says, the word is nigh thee even in your mouth. Yes. Remember, victory comes out of your mouth. Yes, it does. Before it comes into manifestation. It has to. Joy comes out of your mouth before you can ever be joyful. Nah. Because it, you don't walk by natural joy. You walk by supernatural joy. You attain it by faith. And we act just like God acts who calls those things that be be not not as though they they were. were. But now listen, don't say, oh, thank you, Lord, for your joy when you feel like a schmuck. No, you got to find yourself in the pages of the Word. You've got to find yourself in this page. This page will transport you from where you are and it will take you to another place and you see yourself filled with victory, filled with joy. Then from that place, you can shout. You can lift up your voice because that guy ain't you. This is you. When you find yourself in this word, you have just become a champion. Yes. When you champion. find yourself in this word, you no longer walk on death row. No. When you find yourself in this word, you are now no longer troubled on every side. No, no. Because the sides that are troubled, you're walking above them. Oh. Yes. Yes. That is where I am. I live above the fray. 
Prophesy your victories. Prophesy your joy. Prophesy your future. In. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whew, glory. Oh, yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told Sister Billy on the way here to the meeting tonight, the Lord woke me up this morning and began to talk to me. And I shared with you exactly what he just said. Yes. The Spirit of the Lord, in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 1, it says, And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was, since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Every one that is found written in the book. We're written in there. In the day of trouble, you are guaranteed to come out if you find yourself in the book. written in the book. <laughs> and this meeting's in the book. Praise God. And that's what he said to me this morning. Basically, you can study these out for yourself, but you find throughout the Word of God, many people were written in the book before they came on the scene. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. I believe it. I know Enoch it. Enoch found himself in the book yes. in the sense that he walked with God. And Jude says he saw Jesus coming with 10,000 of his saints. Yes. Yes. So he saw what was coming and yes. said, why can't that be for me? And he went on home. Yes. So he saw what was to come, and he saw it could be for him, and he pulled what was to come into his day. That's right. Many people did that. Josiah David was mentioned by yeah. name. Yeah. David functioned in another covenant. Yeah. We see it throughout the Word of God. Daniel, in Daniel 9, did yes. it when he found the prophecy of Jeremiah. Yeah. I know the plans I think towards you. And he said, we should be delivered by now. In other words, we've been in Babylon over 17 years, and the prophet said, we should already be home. Why aren't we home? And he found himself written in the book. That's right. The principal example was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yes. Isaiah 43 says, you'll go through the fire, you yeah, won't be burned. that's right. And verses later, he says, I've sent over into Babylon, and I will bring down their nobles. Yes. They had read that, students of the word, and that's where the faith came from. They found themselves written in the book. They didn't just one day decide, I'm not going to bend. They said, I'm in Babylon, there's a noble. He's demanded me to bow to a false god, and God's prophesied through Isaiah, he must be talking about me. And he found himself written in the book, and he said, if I go in that fire, I won't be burned. Mm -hmm. Throughout the word of God, Jesus did it more clearly than anyone else, of course, in Isaiah 53, where he says, in Isaiah 53, 10, he says, by his knowledge, he shall justify many. Yes. The Amplified Bible says, by his knowledge of himself, which he has and imparts to others. Yes. So he said, everything fulfilled about me that is written about me must be fulfilled. I want to say this word to you by the Spirit of God, for it is indeed the purpose of this meeting. And I see a couple of things happening by the Spirit of God. So many things are taking off, and there's so many voices that are going to speak to this issue, I believe, tonight. As the Lord said to me at the beginning of this year about worship, which I can show you later. It may not be pertinent for this moment. But the point is, there's two thrusts. One is what's going to take place from this meeting in the nation and the nations. But the other is the purpose of this meeting to produce that manifestation. 
And the Lord spoke this word to me, and that was this. I, I, I read Hebrews 2, and it simply says, Jesus said, I and the children God has given me. I recognized that from Isaiah 8.18. He quoted, the Hebrew writer yes, quoted he Isaiah 8.18. And he said, I and the children God has given me are set for signs and wonders. Yes. Now, we are not only the seed of Abraham, but Jesus said, I and the children God has given me were set for signs and wonders. Which is exactly where Sister Lynn was this afternoon because Acts 3 says we are the children of the prophets. That every prophet from Samuel till now foretold of these days. And we exist today, and the heavens must retain Jesus, as many of us know, until the restitution of all the things spoken by the mouth of all the holy prophets since the world began. This is a gathering of the children of the prophets. And the word of the Lord came to me and said to me recently in a meeting, he said about stirring up the gifts of the Spirit. He said, your gift must go into operation so that the plans can go into manifestation. It's truth. It's truth. It's truth. And this afternoon, while Sister Lynn was speaking, the word of the Lord came to me in very similar terms. And he said to me, the prayers move the prophetic proclamation into manifestation. They do. So the prophetic word of the Lord and the energy released in prayer is going to bring the signs and wonders that are at our doorstep. They're there. Into manifestation. This meeting and the way you help prayers is just a simple thought. And I'm going to wait on the Lord here and see what the Holy Ghost has to say about this because he didn't want us, any one of us to miss the understanding of the principal purpose of this gathering. And that is James chapter 5 where Elijah prayed. Yay. The heavens did not give their rain for the space of a period of time. And then he prayed again, and heaven gave its rain. And the word of the Lord there that we all know so well, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That word is the Greek word energeo. It means the divine energy is released. Yes, it is. And recently the Spirit of the Lord took me to that and he said this phrase to me and it's what this meeting I'm convinced is absolutely about. Because as I studied that out and I studied it out not only in some commentaries but in the Greek, there's some superfluous wording there in the King James but that word energeo is the same working of mighty power that raised Jesus, raised from, the Jesus from the dead. But instead of putting power to work out there in signs, wonders, and miracles, the idea is it's mighty in its power and it's in working in the prayer. Mm -hmm. That as the person prays, they get strengthened. That's truth. To do those signs and wonders. Hallelujah. You're helping the prayers. Praise the Move Lord. into where Ephesians 3 says we have to go, which is to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, man. that we might see the plan. That's right. The height, the width, the depth, the breadth, so that according to the scripture, Amplified reads this way, that we might be strong to grasp and apprehend. And the word of the Lord to Hezekiah when he was surrounded by the enemy was not, on, not only to have a prophetic declaration, but the word of the Lord says, the children have come to the birth, Will I? but there's no strength to bring them forth. Mm. Whatever level of energy and faith and prayer it took to get us to this level, that's I right. don't know what would have happened had Elijah not prayed a second time. Right. I suppose it wouldn't still, it'd still not be raining. Third and fourth and fifth. And sixth, the fifth year and, and the sixth year and the seventh year and however long, until he put the same energy to reverse the course yes. that he did to set the course in motion. This meeting is about whatever level we've come to now and the energy that we've put in and the prayer we've put in and the power we've put in to get where we are. It's about that table land that higher place that we have found. We are going there. We're going there. Both in this meeting and from this meeting. There's going to be release of the gifts of the Spirit that you saw many years before that will be birthed out of this meeting. The spirit of worship, if those will catch it, will fall in their congregations by the time they get home from this meeting, from this meeting tonight. 
the residue of the spirit of miracles, signs, and wonders is beginning to literally unfold. And people are going to go to new places. They're going to see new faces. They're going to have new graces. They're going to run new races. They're, go they're going to the next level. Oh, and they're going you. to begin to defeat every devil. And they're going to begin Yay. to see, glory to God, Yay. that they've got their feet on a different place. Hallelujah. Yay. They're occupying a different place. Sister Terry, you were ministering recently, and you were talking about that place concerning the election in prayer. And you went back to the place in Zechariah where he talks about resisting the enemy, but that the Lord would give us places to walk. And that's yeah. exactly what I'm talking about tonight, places to walk, because verse 8, the very next verse says, these men that walk in those places of intercession are men of wonder. And that word wonder there is a manifestation of signs and wonders. In other words, these places to walk of supernatural power, yes. supernatural signs, supernatural yes. wor wonders, operating as the children of the prophets, these places can only be unwrapped and unleashed, and the strength to grasp and achieve them can only be released in a meeting as we gather together only then. and release that time, United. not only prophetically, but we release that time in prayer. Yes. And so tonight, by the Spirit of God, the, the idea of the prayer meeting is to do exactly what we ha see happen in Ezekiel's life. And that is simply this, that there is a release of divine strengthening, a release of supernatural energy in the heart and in the mind and in the life of every prayer to come up to that next place to walk. Yes. You walked in one place, you're going to the next one. Stay right with me for a minute. As he was ministering to you, Billy, the Lord spoke to me something really funny to me. He said, tell her that the reason I'm using her in these days is because she's always been wild about me, mm -hmm. <laughs> uninhibited. Mm -hmm. And he reminded me of David because David was wild. He could not be tamed. And see... I can only describe it to you this way as a trumpet player. I studied, I've been playing the trumpet for 50 years. I had reached a plateau. I knew all there was to know about the mechanics of playing. But I could not seem to break through to that other stratosphere until I began to learn that I everything must most of what I learned was backwards. But you know the verse it says we are to cast down vain imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God and to take captivity every thought. There will never be a breakthrough in worship unless you take into captivity all the thoughts and the, and the ceiling that you have put on worship in your own mind. There will never be new things in your churches until you break that imagination of this is as high as we can go. I never will forget the day that I lost where I was on the horn. I lost the notes, because I don't think notes, I think in streams. But I lost where I was, and, and I was playing way above what I thought my limit was because I didn't know that I had passed it. <laughs> Whatever our understanding of worship is, it must come higher. Whatever your understanding of breakthrough is, it must come higher. Whatever you consider normal must come up. But I will tell you a secret. When I play, I refuse to think this is my highest note. Because the minute I think I'm there, I can never pass it. And so what we have to do is not think that we've arrived. Isn't that the truth? But we must Isn't begin to say, hey, Lord, how high can I go? How high can I go? With you. How far how can, I go can I go with you? There are no limits with you, and I'm in you. So therefore, I cast all the limits a 
prophesy in my church, in my congregation, in my family, in my belief, in what I'm believing God to do, I cast it all aside and I say, it's a new day. I will not be limited by my past failures or my past accomplishments because that is not the ceiling that I have established. I have established that there is no ceiling. Therefore, you won't stop when you think we've gone as high as we can go because to God, we have only just begun. I believe that worship times are going to change. And, and listen, don't paint God into your proverbial box. Do not put God in because he's going to do things new. And it's not going to be comfortable for some of you. It's not even going to be believable for some of you. Because you have such a stoic box that you put God in. I put my God in a box. But I found that he works better outside. <laughs> and as my box increases, you know, Stephen Curtis Chapman wrote a song called The Great Adventure. Yeah. And you know, we, we had so many buzzwords, that they sort of seemed to fly by us. But we're living the great adventure. We're living in a country that's broke, that doesn't know what to do, that's making money, just making money and buying old cars. <laughs> we live in a country that doesn't know where it's gonna go next, but we know. And while there's darkness in Egypt, there was always lights in the land of Goshen. We are in the great adventure. We're not about to be in it. We are in it now. And so we, there aren't any rules. There are no rules. But you have to pay attention to the sounds. And you have to be reckless. Say, I have to be reckless. We are taught in religion not to be reckless. We are taught as citizens not to be reckless. But there's nothing in the word that teaches us not to be reckless. David was reckless when he ran toward Goliath. Daniel was reckless when he went into the lion's den. Reckless is a part of God's MO. We are the chosen generation. We are the royal priesthood. We are the holy nation. We are a peculiar, a strange people that we should demonstrate, show forth the praises, cause them to explode, cause them to be heard. Not, we are not the silent minority, we are the major majority because with God on your side, you have just attained a majority status. We can no longer play by the world's prognosis and the rules because these are new days. I am convinced, Billy, that the music is gonna change. Oh, yeah. I'm convinced that what we have called worship before yeah. is gonna change. Yes, sir. So yes, don't, sir. you know, don't paint yourself into a box that's limited by your vision and your understanding. Pray that God will show you his vision. And don't be afraid if you've never written songs to write them. Don't be afraid if you've never sang songs to sing them. Because to God, he is not, he is untroubled by your missing of a note. God told me one time, I could care less what note you miss. I'm looking at what your heart is doing. Because the notes that come out are a reflection of your heart. And one more thing, and then it's yours, Billy. No matter how great the word is, we all have to put a guard on our ears and on our eyes. If our eyes are single, our whole body's full of light. If our ears are single, our whole body's full of light. I believe 
that worship is the food that causes heaven to function. I believe that worship in my life is what keeps me from burning out, oh, sure. yeah. from quitting. I flew today in a, there were two systems of weather and the first briefer told me, you cannot make this flight. I said, I make that decision, not you. And I began to pray, God, keep the weather like this. You did it for, Moses, you did it for a lot of people. You can split stuff, just split it. Uh, sure, he does it, yes. I, I believe him for that all the You time. can ask my son, split it. We went right between two major systems. It took us a little while. <laughs> but you know what? No matter what you are going through or I am going through, if we look at what we're going through, we will fail. Worship causes you to look at him and to factor what you are going through through his eyes. To God, storms are a non-event. To God, challenges only give him an opportunity to display his greatness. But we have to continue to see us on the other side. I believe these are the greatest days for all of us who are running for Jesus. I believe they're the greatest days. And you know, what you've learned how to do, and you, I don't know of one musician, no matter how much they make, no matter how successful they are in the world, that is ever fulfilled, like when you begin to play and people get healed, when you begin to play and demons get off of people. There's no thrill in the world like that thrill. There's nothing that ever can compare with it. That's the reason music exists on the earth. It does not exist for, for you to applaud us. It exists for us to applaud him. And when that begins to happen, there is no high. It's just how far can we go? Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that every pastor, every music person, every lay worker, every person that's a part of a congregation, that you would ignite right now in their heart a flame to begin to burn brighter than it's ever burned a hunger to worship, a hunger to go higher, a hunger to set aside all of the perceived limitations. There is no high, too high of a place. There is no limit to where we can go. There is no limit to what you will do. There is no limit to where we can take this. In the name of Jesus, we give you the praise. Lift up your hands, everybody. Say this with me, I receive, I receive right, now, right now into my life, into, my life, into the ministry you've called me to, ministry, a new fire, a new, fire, a new, hunger. A new hunger. I will go I will where I've not, I've not gone and I will not be afraid not and I will not judge new things. I will be a part of every new thing that my God does, I will not be left behind. I will be a part. I will be in the middle of it. And I will say, send me. Let me be a part. Let me sing. Let me shout. Let me stand on the tower. I am not afraid. I am a voice. I am filled with the life of God and I will never be the same. Hallelujah. 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 Brother Phil, I need you. I need you to stand right beside me here. Glory to God. There's an anointing on you 
that's going to release this on our lives in the name of Jesus. I want you to be my witness first of all, but I also want to say you just confessed it, you prayed it, and the Bible says it's not the hearer only that's blessed, it's the doer. And there's about to be an unusual release of his power and supernatural manifestations all over this auditorium. And you're going to begin to see a Holy Ghost meeting take on that flavor of getting past just the proclamation into the manifestation. Glory to God. On December the 31st, as the Lord has customarily done a number of years, not always on that day, but this year it was that day, prophesying to me about the, the, the time to come in this particular year. One of the things that the Lord seems to be hitting on here toward the end of the calendar year is what he said. He said, this year worship will once again be brought to the forefront by the Holy Spirit as believers begin in a greater way to establish Jesus' lordship as source and become kingdom-minded, thus seeking first the kingdom of God. And listen to what he said the result would be. He said, this atmosphere of worship will both release and cause to manifest a supernatural glory that will be accompanied by angelic intervention and spontaneous miracles. He said, these meetings in more than one place around the nation will become extended at times and spread throughout the region. And then he said this, this atmosphere will unleash the spirit of increase. And he gave me Psalm 67 where it says, when we praise him, the earth yields its increase. And he said, churches will experience supernatural growth. Others will be born. Ministry gifts will be birthed. And the next generation of believers will come out of this move. And he said, the effects will be lingering and they'll be lasting. Hallelujah! I'm going to act out what I saw because prophetically God works with me in pictures. I see it. I saw me telling you to say the word. you have a microphone? Wild. <laughs> Wild! Wild! <laughs> Wild! <laughs>
has set you free and he wants you to be wild, wild. Woo! Have you ever had the desire to walk on the wild side of life? Have you ever thought I'd like to be just a little bit wild? <laughs> when they tell you it's all right, God is letting you know tonight it is perfectly right in his sight for you to go, go wild. I got the wild power living in me. I got the wild Holy Ghost power living oh, yeah, in, wild me. in me. I'm not afraid to dance. I'm not afraid to sing. I got the wild Holy Ghost power living in me. All musicians come up here. All the musicians come up here. Come on, all of you. I got the wild Holy Ghost power setting me free. I'm not afraid to dance, I'm not afraid to sing, I got the wild Holy Ghost power living in me, living in me, living in me, living in me, I'm set on free, I got the wild Holy Ghost power, even at the midnight hour, I got the wild Holy Ghost power living in me. on the B3. Let's have a little wild music and then Deborah, can you go wild? Can you go wild, Deborah? I want to tell you what Deborah did one night. <laughs> Deborah can't hear me. She doesn't have a monitor. Is that right? Yeah. Can you fix it up for her over here, whatever she needs? We went to a meeting. It was a meeting where brother, it was at Brother Ed Dufresne's. And the Lord had told Kenneth and Gloria to go on daily TV. And it was bad on TV preachers at the time. And the Lord told him to go. And, oh, I tell you, he moved in that session to, to show them what to do and talk to them about walking on the water. But Deborah hit a note. She hit a note. It was a sound. And I never have heard that note in my life. And I never heard it again. And when she hit it, heaven fell, absolutely fell. Were any of you in that meeting at Ed Dufresne's that night in Tulsa? You were there, Kai. <clears throat> Wonder might hit it tonight. <laughs> she just came out and just <laughs> hit it. <laughs> hit something, Deborah.
Never done let God out of the box.
say, oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. I said, look what the Lord has done. What the Lord has done. I said, I said, look what the Lord has done. I said, look what the Lord has done. I said, look what the Lord has done. He said, my feet to dancing. I said, look.
said we should. And that's good enough for me. Sit down a minute and I'll tell you about this experiment we're going to run here. I'll give you a little chance to rest. <laughs> now she needs Phil's voice and the piano back on her monitor, on Deborah's monitor. If you can give her that. You all know that Brother Hagen, the Lord told him years ago it would behoove you to look up every scripture on... Don't let them go. They're not going anywhere. Uh, you could get a drink of water or something like that, but... The Lord told him to look up every scripture in the Bible on glory. And he did. And when the Lord would give him the signal... You remember David. You were playing organ for him then. I'm telling the truth. There's David Horton right there. You talk about somebody that could play meeting in the air, he could do it. Sing it to every word. But uh, he played organ for Brother Hagin. And um, he knows that this would happen. You'd, I'd watch Brother Hagin on that platform, and if he'd go jump, get his Bible out, he's going to get those scriptures on glory out. And when he got them out, he'd just start reading them. He'd start at Genesis, and he'd go right on. And somewhere in reading about the glory, he knew it was going to happen. We didn't know which scripture. Sometime he'd get way over there where Stephen looked up and saw the glory, but most of the time he didn't make it that far. Because back over here, a glory cloud would roll in, and it would be bright, and it'd come like a wave, and it'd roll, and it'd pick up all the people. And usually put them in the altar. And Brother Hagin would step back so that he didn't get caught in it. Because whoever got caught in it is going down. <laughs> so I figured if it behooved him to look up the glory scriptures, it behooved me. Now, Brother Hagin noticed something in the glory scriptures. And I don't know if you caught it or not. But I caught it because I studied on the glory. So, 2 Chronicles, turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 5. I don't know how you're going to describe this meeting to your friends. <laughs> Wild! <laughs> you know what? I remember being a little denominational girl, and they told me I couldn't dance. Well, why did God put this in us for anyway? Bless the Lord. Those Hebrews, they dance. They dance wild. But turn to 2 Chronicles. This is when the glory appeared. You're very familiar with this. 2 Chronicles chapter 5. And, and all Israel was there. It was the Feast of Tabernacles. And uh, chapter 5, verse 1, Thus all the work of the Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. So he had all the elders. All of Israel was there. And when I go to Israel and I look over there at Mount Maria where the Temple Mount stood, then the mountains all around it were covered with people, millions of people. But all the Levites, all the... All, well, we read right here what it says. Verse 11. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place, for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course. Normally they served by courses. You remember John the Baptist's dad, it was his course, his father, it was his course. But they were all there that day, probably 4,500. Also the Levites, they're the singers. 
all of, and, and by the way, the, the, the head singer had a big white cloth and he led it, the music with that big white cloth. Also the Levites, which were of the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Heman, of Yedithan, with their sons and their brethren, being in white linen. You, you imagine 4,500 priests in white on a sunshiny day in Jerusalem, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets. It came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, Now there came a point when the Levites, the Levitical choir, and all the musicians sounded like one sound. I don't know what this music from heaven is going to be like. I believe we heard some tonight. I believe some of the things we heard tonight came from heaven. But there will be a oneness to it. Hallelujah. There was a oneness here. As they were playing, they were one, and they, the different instruments picked it up. Did you hear that? Did you see that? Did you know that was coming from heaven? And they praised the Lord. That's hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, it's, they didn't say it. They sang it. That's right. For he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Those were the words. Then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Now, after Brother Hagin studied that, which was back in the 70s, from then on out, in every meeting, he started by getting the people to say, let's all stand and say, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. He'd say, say it one more time, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And sometime he would then move over into a place because the glory had arisen on those anointed words. He said, someday somebody's going to write a song with those words. And a few attempted, but they didn't get it. Now, a blessing for me to go to Hebrew school was to learn to say and sing what they sang. I'm sure they chanted it or sang it antiphonally. The Levitical choir leader would have sang, Hallelujah. And then they would have gone, Hallelujah. Then he is good. Kitov. Ki leolam chasdo. For his mercy goes forever. Ki leolam, for forever his mercy endures. Ki leolam chasdo. Hallelujah. Ki to. Ki leolam chasdo. Hallelujah. Kito, ki leolam hasto. Now we're going to come back to that. But this isn't the only time this is used. Lynn taught us today about Jehoshaphat. And about he sent the singers in ahead of the battle. And they beat all that army that was gathered against them. And he sent them in there with a song. What was that song? Turn to, is it 1 Chronicles or 2 Chronicles? 2 Chronicles 20. Turn to 2 Chronicles 20. Oh, it's so thrilling. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Let's start with verse 20. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. As they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood up and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to, here's what they sang, hallelujah, that's praise the Lord. Ki leolam hasto. For his mercy endures forever. You should just run a Bible reference on that phrase. For his mercy endures forever. And you'll see all the times he had them say it, sing it. All the Psalms were songs. They all have musical accompaniment written. So there has to be something in those words. Sung. And I was once in a place... where the singers and the instruments became as one. And we sang that. I'd like to try a spiritual experiment and see if it could happen tonight. You know, faith steps out there. It's daring. Yeah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Ki to. Ki leolam hasdo. Hallelujah. Ki to. Ki leolam hasdo. Hallelujah. Ki tov, ki leolam hasdo. Stand up. Hallelujah. Do you know the words well enough to lead the part? Do you know the words well enough to be the lead Levite? You do it and I'll follow you. But I don't, I didn't ever get the tune right and I thought maybe God would give it to I you tonight. Tune. You have the tune? Yes. Okay. You. I'll do it in English first. Okay, right? hallelujah, for is he is right? good, for his mercy endures forever, sure.
Let the people of God now say, Let the people of God say, Let the body of Christ say, Let those who fear the Lord say, Let the bride of Christ say, Let the army of God say, Let the worshipers say,
what the Lord just said to me. And when they began to sing and praise the Lord, Jehovah set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. The Lord just made me to know that when we came in that unity right then and sang that same song, he sent ambushments to break assignments against you. We know Brother Ron Smith prophesied that a death trap had been assigned against Melissa. And there were two close calls. But Melissa, it's over. The ambushments were sent tonight. I, I, I know that there have been some targeting of me. But the Lord sent ambushments tonight. Hallelujah. Yes. I know some of you. Come on. I know some of you. Brother Ron, Miss Melissa, Brother Wiseman, Brother Ron Smith. Well, the first thing I heard was a tongue and an interpretation. Did you sense that, Brother Ron? And then the Lord said something else when you guys kept saying wild, and it keeps repeating over and over again. But I believe you have the interpretation, or do you have the tongue? So Know that you are already a tried and proven people that I have already exalted on high. Not one of you will fail. My power is with you. My anointing is doubling up. My joy is your joy, and it will be a double joy. There will be no limit as to what I will work through you. Mighty gifts, mighty wonders, mighty signs. I will cause the dance to come upon you. I will cause extreme joy to break out among you, and you shall sing, and the angels will join you. I am the mighty God. Therefore, exclaim one more time, my praise and my glory. Let a shout come forth. Now, saith the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have anointed you, I have appointed you, even since you were a small little girl, and my powers have gone into you from those that you have revered and those also that you have asked, O oh God, may I have a double portion of what they have. Now you will stand in the face of great adversity in Israel, and you will be the peacemaker 
I will send my peace into your spirit and there will be those men of outstanding character in the Knesset and they will get the information into the prime minister's ears. He will obey what I have to say to Israel. Israel is mine. Israel is the apple of my eye. Israel will not be defeated. Israel will not be defeated and you will stand strong in this evil day. Glory. Hallelujah. And I will give you the ability to speak in diverse kinds of tongues, for they are also mighty keys to my kingdom. And if you're not getting results in one language, switch to another one then switch to another one, then switch to another one. You'll get the same results as those who have already got the results. And yes, yes, I am saying, begin to minister to me in cloven tongues, then the fire will fall, and then the enemy will be defeated, and you will see great joy in your camp, and your home will be saved, for I am coming soon. Therefore, praise me, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, praise you. Hallelujah. Praise Now, before we shout one more time, Mimi, this is Sister Billy or whatever they call you. <laughs> this is what I kept hearing when Brother Tracy kept saying wild to, to tell Brother Phil to say wild. And every time they would say that wild, the Lord would say fire. And he would say wild in my people, fire, wild, fire, oh, wild, that's right. fire. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Fire. And then he told me, go to Ezekiel chapter 8, and he says, uh, what has happened through this worship tonight is that we've drawn near to yes, God. Yes, And Hebrews 12 says, our God is a consuming fire. fire. And then it said, in, in Hebrews, or Ezekiel chapter 8, excuse me, he said, Ezekiel said, I saw God. Uh, yeah, and he was It was a, a likeness from the loins down, he was fire. And from the loins up, he was fire. It says, even the color of amber. That's right. And so Woo! then he said to me, Brother Gene, come here. He said that there are embers lying all over the ground at Prayer Mountain. And there is a preserved seed and there is a residue in there. But it takes fire to melt the amber and release the seed up into the air. And as we've drawn near to the source of fire, that seed is being released now from those embers lying all over the ground. Brother Gene, your vision. For there are those that are sitting in my presence tonight. For you have released your spirit to even leave these premises and to walk with me into the places that I shall lead you, into the places that I have ordained you to go. For there are those that have been held captive by the fear of the unknown. But I'm breaking that fear this night. And I'm taking you into places that have been unknown to generations before you. Though they prophesied at these places, though they wrote and they spoke, of these places I have ordained you to be acquainted I have ordained you to occupy I have ordained you to possess so allow me to free you this night saith the spirit that I can lead you into the unknown for I will take you to newness. I will take you to a new dance. I will take you to new languages. For I'm a God of newness. Allow me 
to take you by the hand this night and lead you into the past that I've ordained for you. Sister Billy, that word was coming forth to you moments ago. I've got a grandson with me tonight. He's my oldest grandson, Levi, 11 years old. He was in your meetings, he and his mom, before I ever had the dream, the vision. After they had left your meeting, he had a dream. In the dream, Jesus came into his room with a book, purple, had a lamb on the front of it. Jesus sat down on the side of his bed in this dream, opened the book. There were two columns of names on each page, first and last name. He said, Jesus began to take his finger and go down the page. But he said his finger would stop at names that he himself recognized. One of the first names that he said the finger of the Lord stopped at was that lady preacher out in Branson, Missouri from Prayer Mountain. He said, Jesus held his finger there. He told me, he said, Poppy, I saw her name. And he said, if you're going back to that meeting this year, can I please go with you? Did not the Lord speak tonight about names that had been written? Yes, he did. Why don't you lift your hands and say, I know my name I is know written. my name is written down. I know my name know is my written. Name is written down. I know. The assignments. The assignments. The assignments of the enemy are being broken. Yes, yes, yes they are. Yes, they are. This night. Thank you. He didn't say the power of Congress availeth much. No. He didn't say the power of a president or a prime minister. He said the effectual. Yeah, yeah. Fervent. Fervent. The effectual. Fervent. Fervent. Prayers of the righteous can produce an effect and avail much. He's While sick. others are wanting to call meetings to stop you, we're calling a meeting to stop them. Hunda. Ma. Sheka farasito. Nunta. I know. Ela dosi. Pale farita. Bobby son. I see whom they. Ken. Hold on. Paleta. Why don't you lift your hands and say we've assembled ourselves here to stop some things? Stop! 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 I'm not here by accident. I said, I'm here stop. on business. I said, stop. We 
Now I heard one more thing. Keep your hands lifted up to heaven. Brother Phil, there's another song in the spirit that you know, or you may not know, I don't know it. But the word that Tracy spoke forth by the spirit of God, Pastor Tracy, excuse me, said there was about to be a demonstration of the things that we had believed God for. And the word of God does not return void. It never returns void, but it accomplishes the thing that it pleases in the place where it's sent to. And so just right now, I heard there's a song in the spirit and in many of the old meetings, Catherine Kuhlman, William Seymour, there wasn't even a laying on of hands. Yeah. But the Holy Ghost went out. Yes. And he did it and he got the glory. And I heard there's going to be miracles. Oh Lord. There's going to be miracles in this fire as he sings that song from heaven. And so if you're in need of a miracle, just lift your hands. Or it plays whatever, Brother Phil, I don't have all of the details. Stay hooked up with him. The Holy Ghost is good. Atmosphere of worship to the King, and many will be changed in a moment as they bow before Him. Many will be healed and for. Atmosphere will in unleash the spirit of increase, 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 increase. Supernatural. In the earth, everywhere. 
miracles are beginning to break out right over in here. And if you'll just immediately thank God for your miracle, it'll go all the way across the building right now at, 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 as, as Brother Phil continues to minister and worship. Believe God. Right over in here is where it starts. It'll go all the way across. Be patient over here because it's coming that way. Ah, glory. There it is. Hallelujah. Now praise him. Worship him. Get excited about your miracle. Thank God it's happening right now in Jesus' name. Claim it. Claim it. Thank God for it. Oh, yeah. Here it comes. It's moving over now. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Glory. No limit to God. Take the limit off and believe him. Believe him mightily. Praise the Lord. One more time, Brother Phil. Praise God. Spontaneous miracles Be released right now As we bow down As we bow down To worship Thee Isaiah 818 says, I you are holy. and the children that God has given me are set for signs and wonders. We heard our brother say that this young man is here with us tonight. Saw your name in the book, Sign and a Wonder. Miss Billy, there's a release in this meeting for the glory to go to the next generation. The prodigals are coming home. That's one of the things the Lord told me this year. In, in some of the things he told me about this year, one of the things he said was the prodigals are coming home this year. And when she said wildfire, the word of the Lord, and you're my witnesses right here, what he said to me, the glory will take the breath out of many as they're surprised by the manifestation of his presence like Solomon and Sheba. He said the fire of God will be seen upon his ministers. It will manifest through their eyes. At times their very face will shine as Moses and Stephen. And he said specific instruction will begin to come from the Spirit about protocol in his presence and concerning our giving. Our giving, our giving. 
When you talked about Isaac sowing in famine, the first thing he said to me about this year is that we would sow with one hand and reap with the other. And he said the gifts of the Spirit were going to go into operation with our giving and over offerings and that there would be unusual instructions concerning giving. Oh, my Jesus. Thank you for it. And when you were talking about Malachi 3.10, one of the things we saw, Lord of hosts, yeah. is not just the armies, but as you well know, the angels, which means yes. the angels go to work through our giving. Yes. So when you said the ambushments were set in motion, in this atmosphere of worship, he said angelic intervention and spontaneous miracles and the release of increase. It's all happening right in this meeting. Hallelujah. And I just, I perceive in my spirit this young lady is representative of a generation coming. Jenny, I saw you in the spirit. I saw you young people in the spirit. I saw this young man in the spirit. Jenny. And uh, I actually may be representative before you leave or tonight. If you see if it's proper, you might want to lay hands on that young, youngest one that saw your name. I saw yeah, that yes, in the spirit. Yes, I, I thought we should do that. I, saw that. I thought we should do that. And yes. I saw that when he was saying that. Yes. And I, I have something I need to say and then that's the release of what where I am with, with what the Spirit of the Lord is, is dealing with. But our children, I and the children God have given, are set for signs and wonders. And we're going to see even on college campuses across this nation. Yes. A great move of worship oh, in the yes. Spirit. I know that. We're going to begin to see that the awakening is going to begin with that generation. Hallelujah. And it's going to begin at the grassroots of our nation. And it's going to explode on the scene. And they're going to have the energy to manifest it. And uh, I saw this in the spirit. I saw it when I was sitting there. And when Brother Phil asked me to come back up and bring this, I was sitting here and I, I just can't ignore it. And I could say it later, but under the anointing is the time to release it. I saw, George Terry, I saw you in the spirit. I heard the Lord tell me to tell you. All of a sudden, I was like I was baptized in love. I wanted to get up and come over there and just grab you and pull you. And I'm like, that's out of order. I can't do that. And I didn't realize what I was feeling. Yes, I love you. There's no way I could love you like the Lord loves you. Oh, no. And I was feeling his love for your ministry. And he told me to tell you that in his eyes, it has integrity and it's pure. And because of your faithfulness and the purity that you've held to in the ministry, now the gifts you've operated in, more gifts are not only coming, but the ones you're in are going not only to another level, but the voice of the Lord and the operation of those gifts is going to come through you with a purity you have never experienced before. And there will be immediate manifestations of some of the things you prophesy. Rather than waiting to see them happen, you'll say them and they'll happen before your very eyes. So prepare yourself. You're going to a new place. And you'll move in atmospheres of worship like this and the meetings that you do. And many lives will be forever changed. You're on the scene for such a time as this. So just obey the Lord. Whatever you're to do with this young man. Well, I, I just want to say to George and Terry that the preparation will be increased with the increase of praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the immediate manifestation. Yes. Like Brother Halverson said in yes. that that we prayed. And for them, there will be crush in Jdaklima, uh -huh. and it will look clean to you. That's right. And then it will pum to prata, and finally pum to makara, and need a pum to kiss. Hallelujah. Brother, you have that? Let Brother Ron give it. For I have ignited you in such depth that you'll be able to bring up any gift at any time, and the fire will absolutely burn through that one that is standing before you and all of the wood, hay and stubble will be dissolved they'll be left pure in my sight and great will be the anointings upon you from now on Thank glory you, to God Thank you. Bon well, well let's praise God hallelujah and those, and those anointings yes. they're in this meeting it's why they're here the, yes. the anointing on these two, there. In fact, let me say this by the Spirit of God. Step up here with me. Step up here with me. I've, I saw it, but I, I haven't seen it as clear as I see it now in the Spirit. You're representative of anyone who will be willing to capture by their faith in this atmosphere a deeper level of prayer and a deeper level of worship in their personal life, in their ministry, in their future. It's about to happen to you and your plofragadestis. 
will moktum drist and you will punt the lack of it. Both poker chinagili and barake fildaste. Well, you think because you've just been married a few months that you shouldn't plunge so much into the spiritual things. But I'm telling you that there is depth in both of you, and I'm going to now make you one in the spirit as you've never even believed me for, and all the past is gone, and there's a new future for you, and look out, devil, here you come. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, let's Thank rejoice you, with them. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank Is you, his Lord. name Levi, brother? <laughs> Levi, can you come up here, please? You mind to do that? We're going to have a very special service Saturday afternoon. I've already seen it in the spirit. We're going to have young people. Glory. We're going to have seasoned saints. They're all going to be ministering together. I, that's a meeting I saw. It's really good when you see a meeting. Then you just act it out. Come up here, uh, Brother Wiseman, please. So you are Levi. Praise the Lord. And my name is in the book. How wonderful. That's so marvelous. Elevratanya Nicola. Father, I know that there's coming forth uh, young ones who from their mother's womb will carry great anointings. And their spirits will be even prophetic. And they'll move and be a praise in the earth. And I thank you for that. And I thank you for the cocoon that you're going to place around Levi right now. You're weaving it around him. And nothing can penetrate it and take him off the course. Nothing. And in the name above every name, I appreciate the gift and gifts in Levi. And in the name of Jesus, we minister to them to be unwrapped at the proper time as God would have it. In Jesus' name. And Father God, if you'd like to pass on any anointings to him, from those we've been with or who've laid hands on us at your pleasure we lay hands according to the word and you give what you want to give he said thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Lord And it's a touch of God on your family. And on the ones that are walking close and one who's not, there's the same touch. And he's coming in real soon. He's been running from what he knows is in him. But he's losing the battle. And he's soon going to walk and you're going to say, my God, I praise you. I saw it all the time. Then he's going to surpass what you thought would be. Hallelujah. And bring great glory to his body, the Lord's, and glory to the head of the church. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise. Praise you, Father. Just stand up and praise him. Is there anyone here? And you just have not yet been assured that you are there in the Lamb's Book of Life, that you have 
entered into the kingdom of light that you know the Lord is your Savior this is a believers meeting but there could be one and if you were here glory be to God hallelujah praise you Jesus praise you Lord come to Jesus now if there's one is there one just lift your hand And we'll pray for you. Just stand up here with me, Levi. Just stand up here. Why did it look like that book? book and it had a lamb on it like laying on the grass and it it was a book filled with names and I don't know if it was just creatures or the lamb's book of life or something Levi why don't you just give a an invitation to the people that might not know him and just say come to Jesus just say, come to Jesus. Just say that. Come to Jesus. Say it again. Come to Jesus. Say it again. Come to Jesus. Is there anyone here who needs to come to Jesus? Praise the Lord. Everyone here knows the Lord. Praise God. Now, if you've not yet been baptized in the Holy Spirit, there's an anointing of the Holy Ghost here right now. We're going to all say this. Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus. He's the baptizer. In the Holy Ghost. I am born again, washed in the blood, so that I can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I can receive a language unknown to me, but known to God. And I ask you for that language, of that baptism, now. And I believe that I receive. Now lift both your hands. Everybody in here, take a deep breath. And when you breathe out, begin to speak with tongues. Porotile mele kala 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 dide kombra kala kala dide kala tide kombra tele kishka. Oh, balakaya ni ne nombre kala kaya ni ne nombre bre satala ni kala gabra dala chenye. Kopra kala kaya ni ne nombre kele vraba satale no kopra tala nika batara nika barata nika barata nika barata nika barata nika. Celebrado gombre kala kaya ni ni nombre kala vrata ejeri braso toro brodo le brinya kala vrata le bre atala mara kala la 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 ke la braba kaya ni ni nanye ke le braba la kala la li le le la mora ma yo me le bre braso
Is that you, Dexter? Okay, I'd like to see you back behind here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be blessed as you go. Be blessed in your sleep. Be blessed in your fellowship with him. In Jesus' name, we bless you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Viva.